Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. Today is the 1st of March. It's been a few weeks since I did the last report. Apologies about that, but there's been quite a lot happening in the last few days. Now, last time you were with us, we were down the valley and I had this mystery of why we discovered stones appearing from nowhere and sort of rolling down the hill and grass growing underneath. Thank you for all the comments and your suggestions. And I think we actually had the answer in one or two comments. And the answer is, it's badgers. And badgers apparently like to find a stone in a grass field. They see a stone, they root around to try and dig it up because quite often an earthworm underneath, which sort of makes sense. But because the field is basically a slope like that, when they root around, the stone then just tumbles down the slope slightly. And that's why I was discovering loose stones on top of grass with grass going underneath. So basically it's badgers looking for earthworms. So thank you for all the comments and I hope that solved the mystery. The other thing I said while I was doing on that video, we were waiting for it to dry out and we had the fingers crossed that the frost uh, that were in the forecast were going to arrive. And boy, did they arrive. We had minus six, minus seven here. And the good thing about that was we got so much hedging done. Now this hedge was my, is the main hedge. We planted this, I think 2004, and it hadn't been done for two or three years and it had got a bit wide. It was really encroaching over the footpath and things. So it's been, it's been knocked back and I'm so pleased it's now done because it's just sparking into life. I can see one or two buds now just coming out here. And it's also gonna help the holly. We planted holly in this hedge. There's a bit more down there and that's gonna finally see the light and that'll be able to pop up as well. What we did, I just put some tape round some trees like this one. So we sort of leave a tree growing up the hedge. There's another one down there. There's quite a good bit of holly here. And this is a very mixed hedge, this uh, hedge. All sorts of um, foods, berries, etc. So it was full of berries when we um, coming into the autumn and over the winter. It was stripped bare by um, birds over the winter. So this is just right. And we have to get this done um, due to um, farming regulations before the 1st of March. February is your last chance to do it. And then we did all round the farm as well, and got rid of all the brambles around the edge. So we had a proper tidy up. We had about four or five full days out with the hedger, sorting everything out. Now, there is a, a flip side to that cold weather. And I was a bit shocked what happened to our oilseed rape on the more exposed fields. So we're gonna have a look at those now. Right, this is the old seed rape, and the old seed rape has just sort of sparked into life. I think on the last report I was saying we'd be getting the fertiliser on at the end of February, when well, he's actually over there doing it at the moment. But this is oil seed rape here. You can see we had these easterly winds that came across here. This is an exposed field. And what happened was we, I mean, I'm, I'm, every day I'm round here sort of trying to keep the pigeons off. There's a little bit of pigeon grazing going off, but we had all these leaves just disappear. They just, in the frost, they just had enough in the cold wind because they didn't have snow cover on them. Normally rape isn't an issue, winter hardiness. It's a tough plant. And if you get a bit of snow cover, there's definitely no issue. But the difference with this was it was minus six, minus seven and the wind chill factor was full on because it was a really strong easterly breeze. He's actually about, the fertiliser guy's about to come in here, so I actually have to take my kites down. I've been so impressed with these kites. The best thing is every morning I go up and just check the kites, but basically they just do, have been doing that for weeks on end. I have moved a few, we've got 10 around the farm now, and because I, the hawks and the buzzards seems to come in as well, so you've got this double whammy of the birds of prey, the local birds of prey. So what's that Metcalf got flying in his field? And they're having a look. Combination of that and the kites is the pigeon damage has been pretty minimal. We're very open because we didn't have that good establishment in the autumn. So I was really worried that we we're gonna get hammered by pigeons. We had the odd bit of grazing, but nothing nearly as bad as I was expecting. And I'm sure those kites have a lot to do with it. Anyway, I need to get that down because he's gonna come in with some booms and he's not gonna be able to get over those kites. So that's why I just gotta lay it down on the floor. But again, look at this, I mean, great big leaf. Look at that, you know, it's just decided to say, no, I'm not growing anymore. 
I, sh I meant to bring a knife out with me, but there's the there's the tap root going right down. So it's in it's quite healthy. There's the sort of plant just starting to expand here. That's what I've got to keep the pigeons off, so they can this growing tip can come out, and that's why we're going in with the fertilizer now. There we go. You know, you can have a little rest done a great job those things again look at all the frost kill here all these dead leaves here never seen it what we think's happened this is a hybrid variety of obviously rape and the varieties don't last very long now with these hybrid varieties there's a new one almost each year so the winter hardiness hasn't actually been tested so I, I was just very surprised to see it I'm going to take that plant and just cut it in half because the other thing you check for is cabbage stem flea beetle and see if there's any larvae sort of eaten away in, in here that might have come in the spring. This is when you suddenly get the damage done. But I think that looks pretty healthy. Right, now this, there's shelter here, there's buildings that size and trees that side, and it's completely different, the obviously rape here. Look down here, there's no real leaf damage, there's a little bit, but nothing like it was where those fields were exposed up the top. And this is growing away really quite nicely. This is absolutely perfect timing to get the fertilizer on, which he's doing over there. If you look around here, you can see how the rows are sort of joining up. So this, this rate, once it gets going, it really starts to grow, gets a little bit of temperature into the soil, it's off. And uh, that's why we're going on with the fertilizer at the moment. And I'm gonna take you around there and just see the machine in action. On the previous video, one of the things I explained, we were doing the soil sampling, because we want to know what the background potash and phosphate numbers are and I'm very grateful well Agri Elemental came in did all the sampling and I now have the report here of what they discovered this field has actually got good indices it's um, two to three on phosphate and potash it's one and one naught to five is where you are with it so it's got good base nutrients in this soil and they also work out on our yield and the soil of how much nitrogen to put on. John in the 36 metre sprayer, I'm just here in the background, he's putting on a liquid fertiliser on the oilseed rape at the moment. This is fine. This is a first wheat foreign linseed. We're not actually putting any fertiliser on this yet because we've got good tillers already. You put nitrogen on at this stage to encourage tillering. There is no issues with this crop at all. So we're just going to time it carefully so we don't over get this plant to do too many tillers because it puts then puts too many ears out and the plant can't actually bring all the ears to harvest. Also with the oil seed rape, it likes a higher amount of sulphur. It picks out sulphur from the um, elements in the soil. So the the liquid fertiliser is put on has a high content of sulphur just to help the crop go through its, its very quick growth stage which is coming up now. And the other thing I wanted to mention happened this month is just more on the news agenda because you've probably seen in the headlines of the national papers how British farming has only got 60 harvests left. I think Michael Gove actually said in 2017 30 to 40 years of harvest left in the UK due to the way we're farming the land. It's always, farmers were very confused where this is all came from. And I am extremely grateful because a few weeks ago, Oxford University had published a report because they looked into this and see how factual it was. And they studied several thousand soil samples around the world and they've discovered last few harvests and soil being depleted, the organic matter going, is a myth. I was staggered when the report came out. I've only seen it reported in the farming press. No national papers have got hold of this, but it was um, written by Dr. Hannah Ritchie at Oxford University. And it's out there, but no, obviously no media's picked up on it. And what they discovered was actually soils are, agricultural soils are in a very good health. 60% of soils around the globe have around a lifespan of 100 years. 50% are over 1,000 years and 33% of soils around the globe have harvest potential of at least 5,000 years. And that's global, as I say. Here in the UK, I'm intrigued of how long we've, these soils are going to last, because we're doing everything to do with soil health now. It's the number one agenda for all farmers, and we're incorporating sort of crop residue. We're, we're looking at the organic content of the soil, etc. 
because this is how farmers earn their living. It's from soils. So the last thing you want to do is deplete your soils. And I'm actually um, going to team up. NRM did the soil samples on the rest of the farm for the background potash and phosphates. I've asked them if I can test the soil for organic matter, basically the carbon content of soil. And there, I'm going to do some tests in a future video. I'm going to do the grass and the permanent pasture, where I think the best soil is, and then also test an arable field. And we've got six metre margins around the field, and that soil hasn't been disturbed or farmed since 2004. So I can see what effect the farming has had on the organic matter of the soil. So I'm going to do that in a background test um, with NRM uh, laboratories. But it does worry me when Michael Gove, who is instrumental in this environmental land management scheme we've got coming, all farmers are going to have to obey to, says and believes that the UK has only got, what was it, um, 30 to 40 harvests left, when it's been factually proved untrue, a complete myth. Because what got me also about the Oxford University um, study they tried to find out where this had come from, where this story of the harvest being depleted, and they could find no factual evidence of anyone saying the soils were being depleted and only had 100 or 60 years of harvest left. So where did this information even come from? You have to have a suspicion that if someone with an agenda has put it out there and it got chattered around and then suddenly became factual when it had no right to. So there you go, it's just something that as farmers you get sort of used to this. I want to sh you to see the, the machine. If you come round the corner, we now see this um, fertiliser going on. The spreader. I think he's filling up. Because one of the things when you're putting liquid fertiliser on, it's quite, well, it's very high rates. And even though this sprayer has a huge capacity, I think it's two and a half thousand or three thousand litres, he needs to be filled up quite regularly because the application rates are much higher than when you're putting a um, herbicide on or something like that. You're in um, 300 litres, something like that. So he's just filling up with the liquid fertiliser now and then he'll charge off in here. I want to show the boom working for you because it's, it's not a spray as such. It's known as a dribble bar and it just it sort of runs down a little thing and it's so it doesn't blow around in the wind. It goes directly down uh, onto the soil. And I love this machine for this because it spreads fertiliser absolutely precisely. If you're trying to do fertiliser, we call it solids, so like little uh, prills, it's quite hard to do on a windy day. You can feel um, it's windy today. When we had narrower tram lines, it was OK, but now we're going up to 36 metres. It's very hard to do with spinning discs. And that's why we like doing it with a liquid fertiliser because it's absolutely precise to the nearest sort of two or three litres a hectare. Yeah, this, this is the field he's in. You can just see the rows growing. I can't wait for this field to get going. Um, see how it all responds again. You can see the dieback from all the frost on here as well, all the dead leaves around here as well. The frost really got to this bit as well. Right, well, what I'm going to do now, I've got to go over to the other side because I had a bit of a shot this morning. Uh, it's a Monday and over the weekend, electricity board have dug a trench right over our access gate into the fields we're about to go and fertilize with this uh, machine so i'm going to go out there take a shovel with me and uh, try and get over the fill in the trenches so he can get across and get in the field and get fertilizing so there you go that's what's been happening on harry's farm all going on it's lovely that spring is finally here and everything is going to start growing again and um, budding up all the hedges, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.